We had not been able to gather much information locally about Mount Everest. A few of the shepherds said that they had heard that there was a great mountain in the next valley, but they could not tell us whether the river before us came from this mountain. They called the valley the Gama Valley, and little did we realize at the time that in it we were going to find one of the most beautiful valleys of the world. At the head of the Gama Valley towers Mount Everest. Hidden here is the mountain's seldom viewed east face. This is the largest side of the mountain whose name local Tibetans call Chomolungma, goddess mother of the snows. Mount Everest's spectacular eastern side. Next to Chomolungma is Lhotse, the fourth highest. Further down the ridge is Makalu, the fifth highest mountain in the world. And standing outside the valley is Kachanjunga, the world's third highest summit. But it is Chomolonzo that towers over the valley, here, as we see, growing into morning light from sunrise. We soon reached our viewpoint of a few days before where except for the distant roar of the stream far away, below in the valley there was no other sound, only an intense stillness. Never anywhere have I seen the moon or the stars shine so brightly. Across the 2,000 mile Himalayan length, in no other valley can one walk in such company with high mountains. In addition to the four of the world's five highest, seven other summits stand over 7,000 meters or 22,000 feet. Here, uniquely, Earth gathers not just wonders of height, but also biology and culture. Everest's hidden valley is entered only by crossing passes that are at half atmospheric pressure. To enter is hard work, where wind-driven snows close entry for much of the year, and the weather can always surprise. The most beautiful valley in the world is protected by Earth herself. Like climbing Everest, to enter this valley requires a serious expedition. With the large megafauna, there is the blue sheep and its magical prey, the snow leopard. The unique climate created by these highest of all mountains brings in the moisture that allows this biology to flourish. The mountains, Everest, Lhotse, Makalu, and the other sisters create a microclimate that pulls the warm, moist air of India up the Arun River and into this valley so that although it is high in the center of the Himalayas, what the weather brings is moisture and warmth down at the bottom of the valley. And this allows the richness of trees and animals to flourish against the backdrop that you will soon be seeing in this film of the mountains themselves. In this one valley, you have a transect of the richness of life from the subtropics through the warm temperate, through the cold temperate, to the alpine, to the arctic-like summits of the world's highest peaks. In this one valley in the center of the Himalaya is now preserved because of the Chomolongma National Nature Preserve, is now preserved a representation of the pristine biology that was once throughout Central Asia. So we are right now in the Gama Valley. It's in the heart of the Himalaya, the core of the fastest growing, highest mountain range in the world, with 
incredible geology here. You have these amazing mountains rising fat higher than anywhere else in the world at a, at a more rapid rate, and they're also being eroded at a more rapid rate. You have incredible earthquakes going on here. You have, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, ice fields and glaciers coming down. We hear landslides and avalanches every day. This is just an incredibly dynamic part of the Earth's crust, Gamma Valley. As a giant spectrum exists in the geology, so too is the biology of the valley. The diversity of nature here can be seen through flowers. Twelve species of rhododendron ascend the valley. Tall trees with giant blossoms at the valley floor in the warm temperate zone. Bushes higher up in the cold temperate areas. Then shrubs above the tree line in the alpine zone. Before this valley was recognized as Earth's highest, it was recognized as sacred. Here, where Earth comes closest to heaven, to this place came Guru Rinpoche, to a special cave. We are walking toward his cave along the shores of a sacred lake, where if the pilgrim pauses and can look onto the still waters and sees one's own reflection, then self-understanding comes. One thousand years ago, when Guru Rinpoche came, bringing Buddhism to Tibet, he found this valley to be a special retreat. Then, when the whole Himalaya was pristine, even then, the Gama Valley was holy. As we came over the Langmala Pass yesterday, we came across a number of these beautiful, beautiful rocks, which have these circular dark uh, clusters surrounded by white uh, orioles in the midst of these black and white uh, minerals that form the ground mass of this rock. They're very unusual, and it was particularly interesting that they happened right at the point at which a Guru Rinpoche uh, came across the same pass uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago uh, and created a lot of folklore, a lot of, a lot of cultural uh, descriptions of why this rock is here. And, and what a geologist would say is that this rock is actually a dike that cut through the ancient rocks. And the reason you have these, these orioles, this is called orbicular, uh, an orbicular granitoid. Uh, it's a dike that is much younger than the rocks that it cut through, these ancient gneisses. Whereas in here you have quartz and feldspar, plus mainly uh, the dark minerals, uh, uh, pyroxene, hornblende, and so forth that, that exist in here. It's a very special rock. We didn't see it anywhere else on the trip. Uh, very, very rare, and it's a particularly beautiful rock. This, this particular specimen is especially beautiful because it's in the shape of the cave, it's in the shape of the rock or the mountain that is overlying this, this beautiful cave complex that was, uh, that was um, first built uh, in the 700s, I guess, 700, 800 years, uh, 1300 years ago by Guru Rinpoche, uh, just beyond the mountains between here and, and uh, Chomolongma. A very special rock in some very special mountains. Sit over there. First, he talked about changes that he has seen. He was saying that in former time, when his grandpa and his grand great grandpa's time, people lived alive by cutting trees and uh, digging up those uh, herbs like medical herbs but later later like QNP or National Nature Preserved happened and uh, um, established and uh, they don't cut anything and he has actually worked for uh, protecting a forest for 10 years at uh, Saikata and he has seen that it's just growing, the, the trees are growing. 
So that's uh, the first part. And second part, it is now we have a lot of tourists because of QNP and because the preservation here is becoming one of the most beautiful places in the world. So a lot of res a lot of tourists is coming. Well, we're here in the heart of the Gama Valley, which is one of the hidden valleys of Artemisia. It's one of the Belus, or one of the sanctuaries, created in both mystic and physical space by Guru Rinpoche when he brought the Dharma to Tibet in the 9th century. And these spaces both exist as physical refugia during times of crisis, but more importantly, they're metaphysical sanctuaries. And as Guru Rinpoche sowed these sacred valleys along the crest of the Himalaya uh, 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 as if a, 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 upon a bone of the earth itself, the skeleton of the earth itself, these became places where um, of tr tremendous spiritual significance. Uh, to, to meditate for a day in the Gama Valley was to meditate for a thousand years anywhere else in the world. To enter the valley was to enter a radiant Buddha field that, that uh, had quelled all the mountain deities and brought into being the possibility of a transcendence of the human spirit. So these valleys were, from the Buddhist perspective, this is what made it sacred. Mount Everest, Shomalungma, was never a sacred mountain. It was the environs of the flanks of Everest the path of the pilgrims that sanctified the landscape. The Gama Valley in the Chomolongma, or Mount Everest National Nature Preserve, equals in size the country of Denmark. It is three times larger than America's Yellowstone National Park. And this large national park connects across the border in Nepal to five protected areas. Created has been a total area of conservation, equal in size to Switzerland. This national park was the first in the world where local communities enforced conservation policies. There is no separate warden force to police the park. It is local communities and government who enforce the rules, even now after 30 years. And working with them is a new type of villager a change agent termed Pendaba. The Pendaba's job is to help the villagers and also to teach the people about conservation practice. People are partners with the government here in this national park. While the initiative to create the park came from me, an outsider, it was with and by the government that the decision was made. But once the national Chinese government, then the local Tibetan government, all saw the value, an exciting partnership was formed. Colonel Howard Berry, when he left the Gama Valley in 1921, after discovering its amazing beauty, reflected in this way. When all is said about Chomolungma, the goddess mother of the world, I come back to the valley, the valley bed itself, the broad pastures where our tents lay, where a yak grazed and where butter was made, the little stream we followed up to the valley head, wandering along its well-turfed banks under the high moraine, the few rare plants of saxifrages and gentians and primulas so well watered there, and against the blueness of the air, which charmed us. Though I bow to the goddesses, I cannot forget the gentler spirit of this valley, the changing winds and the variable moods of mountains always friendly. At the bottom of the world's highest mountain, at a valley floor of 7,000 feet or 2,200 meters, the forests tower with trees which are as wide as a man is tall. Life's natural balances here are still the pristine, but are now protected. Almost everywhere else between Earth's two billion population of India and China, people have cut the wild to feed human desires.
but here habitat is still a rich pyramid of life. The Gama Valley can be considered a museum of the wild, a wild now gone over much of Asia, but here still protected, still pr pristine, still without any permanent human habitation between the two great populations of India and China, both one billion people each. People are partners with the government here in this national park. While the initiative to create the park came from me, an outsider, it was with and by the government that the decision was made. But once the national Chinese government, then the local Tibetan government, all saw the value, an exciting partnership was formed. While the initiative to create this national park came from me, an outsider, it was an action of partnership with the government. Tibet was closed then, but I approached the government in Beijing, then the local government in Lhasa, and all saw the value. And with that, an exciting partnership began in the mid-1980s that continues today. The management here in this national park is by zones. Parallel management approaches are followed. One zone is strict conservation, such as that being used in the Gama Valley. Another is sustainable agricultural use. And further, there are areas that are being rehabilitated in their environmental quality. And finally, there is responsible town planning because people live in this area as well as a vibrant nature. Conservation fundamentally is a value. It is the awareness that people are part of balances of values. Is what nature gives the most precious or is what we take from nature Conservation is a value. The awareness that people are part of balances of values. One is the question of whether nature should be most precious or how nature can benefit us as people. How do we balance this? Conservation is a collection of many values. Each value is one of balance. One is, what is the relationship between what we take from nature and what nature gives to us? How do the need, needs of today, how do the needs of today balance against challenges that will come tomorrow? Life itself, our individual lives, where is our place? What are our privileges in larger life? In connecting to the eternal, Tibet is privileged to understand values deep in the soul of land and people. The Tibetan Buddhist tradition has nourished the people with a respect for the land, with a respect for the life, and for an understanding of their place within the Tibetan Buddhist tradition has nourished the people with an understanding of the deepest values of their place with the land, of their place with the larger meaning of life, and it gives them patience to go forward. While Tibet rapidly modernized like all of China, over the last 30 years, growing a world economy. What unfolded here in Tibet also was an extraordinary string of 18 protected areas, 
Together, they now cover 54% of the land. But as Tibet, like all the world, modernizes, the Gama Valley remains pristine, protected. In this pocket, protected by the world's highest mountains, where the original balance of nature extends still today from temperate forests through alpine meadows to arctic heights, here is both a treasure of beauty and a statement for the world of what people can do. The highest place on the planet as a statement for perhaps the most urgent need on the planet to hold to balance with Earth's forces. Pheasants, among all birds, perhaps most symbolize how protected this land is. For pheasants are found in habitat that is nearly totally protected. Here in the Gama is such pr pristine protected habitat. Pheasants are a key indicator among all birds, they perhaps symbolize better than any other pristine habitat. For where there are pheasants, it is very clear that people have not disturbed the land. But people do come here, taking on the challenges of half the oxygen of sea level in order to see this valley. They come working their way through Everest's blizzards and winds. People come here, and when they do, they find protected natural balances of mountains that touch to the heavens. The highest place on earth exists now as a statement for the highest calling that of people to live with harmony with the earth. People come to the Gama Valley now as visitors. They come taking on the challenges of half the oxygen at sea level and struggling with the high altitudes. They work their way through Everest's blizzards and winds. They come here to see this protected natural balance of mountains that touch to the heavens. They come to experience for themselves the high calling of living in harmony with the earth. The precious Gama Valley as one of the planet's finest crown jewels. <laughs>